Hello, my lovies. Welcome to this episode of Angels Don't Lie. I'm your host, Jeannie Street, and I'm so excited to be back with my angel team, Colleen and Sophia. And we are here to talk about the goddess you. And they're doing a nice, fun interview. So let's get ready to rock and roll. If you have your book, go ahead and grab it and meet me right back here. All right, ladies. Yay. Thank you so much for having us, Jeannie. It's such a pleasure to be back, too, because this is part two part two of our series of The Goddess You. So thank you so much for having us back. And you guys have uh, your Angels Don't Lie shirts on today, which we found out at the beginning when we signed on, which was hilarious. You guys are like, look! We do. We do. <laughs> so I'm wearing the white, and I we did not plan this. We did not plan this at all. And Colleen, you got to... You got to say something. You got to say hello. You got to show that t-shirt that you look so good in. Yes, it was hysterical that we both had the shirts on without consulting with one another. Mine's blue and hers is white. And you can get yours too. (laughs) We promise this was unplanned. This was not planned at all. Hilarious. (laughs) So where do you guys want to start today? We have so much yumminess to talk about in this second episode. I, I'll, I'd love to talk about energy basics because it's one of my favorite topics. Um, when I took your very first rendition of Angel Healer training, um, that was the most life-changing um, concept mm. that I brought into my life was that everything had energy. And I think, I think I knew it at a subconscious level, but it, it, came, it got brought to my awareness in a different way. And what I learned was that... Um, you had a choice in, in what energy you could bring into your life. You didn't have to just accept whatever was there, that you could set boundaries around energy, that you could bring in, make, make more high vibrational choices as to who you surrounded yourself with, what you watched on TV, what you listened to, what you put in your body, um, you know, your, your home environment. Um, and it, and it began to, when you can do that consistently, when you can make higher vibrational choices, it literally changes the vibration of your entire life and your being. Like, and what I loved was that you taught us, like you started with a really simple um, tool that we could use, and it was to rub our hands together and start to, you know, and and for a little bit, and you would talk to us, and then and then we gently just pull our hands apart and feeling the sensation of what energy actually feels like, and. Just practicing that that little tool and trick um, taught me that I could pick up anything and feel the vibration of it. Mm-hmm. Even though, like I said, subconsciously, I think I was always feeling vibration. Like I, I could, my mood would change. I would feel yucky. Like like my body was trying to speak to me, but I didn't have a way to to really articulate it until you helped me um, understand that that's what it was. Like. I give one example and then I'll shut up about um, when I was raising my kids when they were young, especially the four littlest ones. Um, and, and I was always so curious, like, cause I felt like on my worst days, my kids would be acting up and being terrible. And I'd be like, why can't you be good today? You know? And what I realized was I was emitting this like yucky stuck crappy energy to my kids and they were picking up on it and misbehaving. It wasn't the other way around. It wasn't that they were causing my bad mood or that they were picking that day that I wasn't feeling good to be at their worst. It was literally that I was the one that was creating the energy in the room and they were picking up on it and responding to that. And so when I, you know, I I, I think I did kind of get it at the time, but not to the same extent that I did. You really, you really Mm. helped me understand that concept and how I could participate with it and make better choices about the energy. 
that I, I love that. I, I think it's so powerful when you can see it in the different areas of your life of, oh, okay, so this is energy and this is what I can, this is how I can choose to show up in the energy. Um, and sometimes, like you said, we can't help how we are showing up if we don't know, we don't understand like with the dynamic of our trauma or our pain or our suffering, but then the world around us is reflecting to us the inner chaos. And that is another interesting experience when we start to understand how powerful the energy we are living in affects our life. I remember um, in college, one of my girlfriends, she was like, you use the word energy so much. And she's like, I don't know what that word means. And that was the first time where I realized that this is not a language that uh, everyone is familiar with. So I would love for you to, you know, the, the fourth chapter in your book, The Goddess You, is Energy Basics. Mm -hmm. um, so I would really love for you to give kind of almost like a layman's version. I'm pulling it up. Yeah, right? Of like, <laughs> yeah. Of, of energy, because not everyone knows what energy is aside from electricity. Right. But can you talk about what energy is in the human body? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I can talk about let's let's start with like how we feel, because I think it's a, that's how we can associate really quickly, because we don't always identify what's inside inside of our body, but we can identify with, wow, that doesn't feel good when I'm get, being yelled at. Or that doesn't feel good when there's gossip or people are talking about me because we can start to like notice, wow, I, I'm feeling stressed. I'm feeling anxious. I'm feeling mad. We can then go to our body, but first we have to identify it. Right. Um, or we can live in the place of always being reactive, 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 because we're not understanding that we have all of this icky energy. I call those the, you know, icky, sticky cobwebs that happen when people come in and they're in a bad mood and it gets on you. And then all of a sudden you're in a bad mood. And you're like, wait, I felt really great this morning. And then you're like, oh yeah, but you know, so-and-so was in a bad mood and I, I must've picked that up. I must've, you know, taken on some of that. And that is energy. We transfer energy all of the time. And then it affects the way we move through our day because it interacts inside within our energy, within our chakras, we'll call them our energy centers, um, creating a flux or a block, uh, a disturbance. So there's not an even flow. So just like our blood flows through our body effortlessly, and then over time, we might have some issues with, um, you know, having some plaque build up in our veins. And then we have a little reaction, which would be high cholesterol. Well, this is the same thing with energy. There's a block, there's a disturbance, there's something happening. So there's not an even flow. And just like cleaning up our diet will lower the plaque, will clear the blood flow so that our, you know, exercise diet, whatever those things are, sometimes medication will, will start to repair or, or have it be open more. We can do things that will open the flow of energy so we feel better and not so tight and stressed or angst or whatever it is that we are, are feeling. I love that. I love that. And um, something that you talk about in this chapter is, is your daughter and how sensitive she was to energy. And I feel like this is something really, really special to talk about. Yes. Um, children and their receptivity to energy is very heightened, but they also don't understand what they're picking up on. So well, how could they experience with that? Right. Unless, unless we, as the adult parent, teacher, whatever, however, we're showing up for the children, unless we have an awareness of energy, how can we direct and guide them? Um, so it's really important what we first do it for ourselves and we take on understanding how we flow in energy. So that's number one key, like take care of it yourself. Stop telling someone else to fix their energy when you haven't first fixed your own. Um, children are really receptive to energy, you know, from the, the time they come in to this world, they are clear conduits. They, they live in a, you know, some people say it's like, um, that sleep state because their brain is just flowing very differently. They're very open They They can easily connect. They can easily see God angels and, and just remember that that's why they'll be like daydreaming and fun. And you'll be like, what were you just doing? They're like, I don't know, because they're like, always like in that, in that flow of energy. 
Um, and then as they get older, they get a little bit more weighted here, a little bit more aware of energy of the physical world and not so much in the veil. And then they start to become reactive in a different way. Did I, in this book, in The Goddess You, I tell, I talk about my daughter, Molly, who at the time, it was very unaware that she was such an energy sensitive soul. And I was really stepping into becoming aware of all of my sensitivities, but I also wasn't in the place I am now. I was just still in like, I want to say those phases of like, I get it, but I don't, I didn't get it. Like I get it now. Um, and so some things I wasn't following through with my own, my own internal guidance. And I knew there was something off with Molly. I knew that she was taking on the energy of her peers. And she was, I knew I understood, really understood the empath qualities that she had. But what I didn't notice about myself is I, I really was tapped into it, but I couldn't articulate it either. Like I wasn't flowing fully in confidence at that moment. Um, so it took an outside conversation to bring me exactly what I knew to be true and then for me to take action like and then I was ready to take action I was ready to be like okay angels are like here 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 do these things and uh, that was easy that was the easy part for me like once I was in it I would receive the guidance and I would you know effortlessly let go and just follow where they were leading me but it was more like trusting that I knew the answer and trusting myself not to push it away so when you have that gut tap in, when that's an energetic tap in, that's an energy that brings you to explore something and God will provide earth angels. He will provide the right sources when you aren't paying attention. And we might even want to push that away. We might want to be like, no, 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 you know, get out of my business or we might push it away. But we, if we're open we can see it as such a gift and how God speaks to us and helps us and, and lends us a hand. He lends us. I always say that, like, he throws us a bone. He's like, here you go. Like, I gotcha. Like, you don't have to do this alone. And I, I've witnessed the same type of energy sensitivity since writing The Goddess You. I have grandchildren and my oldest granddaughter is, is 10 now. But when she was, and she's very energy sensitive, they all, I believe, are. Um, but when she was little, when she was four, she actually started channeling. She actually started to bring through departed loved ones. She did it for me and then she did it for my husband. And it was so pure and effortless. And I was like, look at, look at this girl. Call. It was so like a proud mama moment. Like, wow. But easy, easy for her to access because she didn't have the conditioning. She didn't have the fear that she might have now. Well, that, that right there, I think is, is such a, a beautiful, beautiful conversation to be had is, is the conditioning that society kind of puts on us that yeah. makes us judge ourselves when right. we think we're receiving something from right. God or from our angels. Yeah. Right. And when you have the ability to move in energy fields, you can inadvertently go into somebody's energy field and assign a meaning to what you feel. So when you have insecurities, like um, you know, I'm not feeling great about myself, you know, probably where Molly was at that time, her friends were reflecting back to her some of her own pain. And then she was taking on what they would say back to her. She was taking on their energy as being her truth. And, it, you know, it was really interesting when we removed her from the situation, how it completely changed. She went from being like a student barely getting by to a kid that was, you know, making A's and, you know, impressing all of her teachers because we moved her from public school to a private school midway through her junior year. And the transformation that happened was, it was really unbelievable. Like how she, her whole stature, how she stood just from being able to shift the frequency in which she was living her every day. So, I mean, we don't always have that. We don't always have that ability to, to change the complete scene. I was very blessed at the time to be able to do that. Um, and I know everybody isn't able to, but we can, we can advocate for our children. If it's not the right friend group, if it's not the right classroom, we can move them. And those are some of the things we did start to do. We, we did meet with the school counselors. We did meet with um, the teachers and it was, I never placed it in that. Um, I never wanted to put it in like anybody else was in trouble. I really wanted Molly to interreflect with what 
not that I wanted her to feel like she was in trouble, but like what she inadvertently took on just from being a little bit insecure, just from maybe being innocent in wanting people to like her from in that love people pleasing kind of energy and then how she could stand in her own truth without the blame and the shame. And yes, these things happened and they were matter of fact for me, but like we weren't going to, it wasn't about um, punishment. It was about like, let's, let's shift that. And so we had done some of the work, but for us, it just came very apparent that this was the best move. And, um, and how I knew it was the best move is when my husband actually said it to me, because that was that next moment for me. It was like, without me saying, this is what I was feeling. He automatically said it. He's like, I really feel like this is what's happening. Like he was getting led by God. Like this is the next right move. And I was like, yes, yes, there it is. I think um, circling back to our children and having them be sensitive, what, you know, you did mention that we have to become aware of our own mm -hmm sensitivities and feelings and empathic abilities first and able to help them through it. But I think just you with um, Riley, like being a safe place for her to, to be authentic in front of you is, is a blessing that's kind of shifted. Now she can be that for somebody else. She can, she can open up more um, and share, you know, her feelings, um, which I think as parents or teachers or whatever, like I think, not being afraid of our own feelings, <laughs> allowing children to have theirs. Cause, cause like you said, it's all related to the feelings. So it's, if you're feeling mm -hmm. good, if you're fe not feeling good, if you're feeling confused or whatever, like that's all picking up on some sort of energy, whether it's coming from within or, or from outside. Um, and allowing it, giving, giving kids permission to be where they're at and helping them find the language to express it so that they can understand it. And we can understand them, you know, right. um, it just gives them such a leg up in, in maturity, really. Um, but something else I just wanted to mention about energy basics um, in being people pleasers. Um, I think I actually more recently, I think at one of your group gatherings, something else kind of dropped in at a different level was um, when you're very energy sensitive and you're with someone or in a relationship with somebody who's rather cranky or um, unaware of their energy and what they put out. And as a people pleaser, you're always trying to make them feel better, in essence, to make you feel better. Because if you're around this cranky person and you're picking up all their energy all the time, then you feel cranky and resentful and whatever. And so there's this fine line between controlling energy and the like it just it just keeps going into it's micromanaging it's, it's micromanaging energy it's a form of man manipulation and even though it's done on an innocent space and i say innocent because we, innocent is that we really aren't aware that we're doing it mm -hmm. um when it becomes a really bigger issue is when we know we're moving the energy is when we're manipulating it to get what we want what we want and that's when we really need to take a look at okay this is this isn't healthy. This is a messy way of, of receiving. And um, you'll receive a lot of low vibrational stuff from that point of view. So that's a really big story. But um, yeah, people pleasing can lead to the micromanagement of energy because it's a telltale sign too, for me, um, that someone has trauma, you know, micromanaging energy is I need to feel safe. And you're looking for a feeling, you're searching for a feeling. And we search for feelings all the time, you know, on the outside of us. And that might be in food. It might be in, in social media. It might be in uh, a, anything. It could be anything. Like how easily is it to us for us to be like, oh my gosh, I'm just going to have that ice cream or those French fries. And because we want the feeling of, you know, of, ah, and the same thing with our relationships. If somebody's not giving you what you need, you're trying to get it and they're unaware. They can't do that. And you're trying to fill your cup up and you're looking for them to fill your cup up. So we really have to look at our own internal energy and filling our cup up with source energy, with, with God, with time and meditation and yoga and outside taking a walk, being in nature, those things and letting go of, Ooh, this feels a little sticky. We can start to notice our own energy sticking in spots. 
Um, so that's really a cool thing too. And I, I love that you talk about the icky cobwebs too. talk about stuck energy. You've got like these icky cobwebs that, you know, you could pick up of other people's. Yes. And that that's huge. You really, really can. Yeah. And that really, that came apparent, um, when it was before I even got, ha had the download of the principles, it, it became apparent when I had my shoe store and I would have a customer come in and they would be just going off. They would go in a rant about their day, about whatever was going on. And I noticed like literally the, the air was heavier and I was like, geez, this is interesting. Like they left their cobwebs behind, you know, my cousin and I would be like, oh, like I got their bad mood all over me. We were like, you know, and that's how I started to develop my sage off spray. Um, and we, we actually joked, we were going to name it fuck off spray. Cause we were like, get the fuck off from me. Like this doesn't that feel so good. Funny. Oh my God. It wasn't the people, it was the energy of it. And, um, and then it was really, and then I could start to even see like how drama I created a lot of my own drama and we all do that. And I was like, wow, this is like the opposing energy of love. This doesn't even feel good. I'm like get off of me. <laughs> yeah, so true. And, and energy can live in a room too. Well, of course, right? everything, everything, physical objects are energy. So like we can, you know, I used to do home clearings and I loved them because items would speak to me items that maybe, you know, this person lived in an old home or if they collected old things, books have energy. And if you think of like a cranky old person holding a book and putting all their ugly energy into it, they're really just angry and angst. And that book is holding it. It's on your shelf and it's sending the signal around the room. And every time you walk by, you're like, I don't even know why I hate being in this room. I don't like even being in here. How many times have we said that? Like, wow, this doesn't feel good in here. Well, it can be held from the energy in the physical items. Somebody sat on the couch and they were in a you know, really awful mood. Even people that have died in houses, the energy will stay there if they were really angry and angst and whatever, you can feel it. Or if they were really happy and joyful, people would be like, wow, it feels so good in here. My grandmother loved, loved us and, and she's so happy that well, you can feel it and then you repeat it. I love that. And I know you, you start to talk about clearing energy and, you know, the steps to clear the energy. Um, and I know when you used to do the house clearing, that there were objects that just could not be cleared. Yeah. Right? The energy could not be cleared of them and they just had to go somewhere else. I love that too, because that also gives us permission to make room for growth, make room for the things that we are desiring in our life just by looking at the items and being like, oh, do you belong here anymore? Is it time for you to move on? And moving on could look like a donation. It could like look like selling it because maybe you're going to sell it and receive some abundance. Um, maybe you're going to give it away and receive some abundance because you're going to make a new relationship. You just don't know until you sit and ask and God will speak to us in energy form. He'll tell us through that you know, that's why we'll have a desire. Like I just have to, I just got to declutter or um, how many times we want to rearrange our room or we want to, we want to get rid of stuff. Well, that's the energy saying it's too much in here. I can't handle all of this stuff. <laughs> so we can find ourselves hoarding and like holding on to things, not wanting to let them go because it can feel very familiar. We might like the weight of that energy, but that weight can really keep us stuck. And in the sameness. I love a good clearing. And this is a perfect time for me, like springtime and fall. I really feel like are brilliant times of releasing energy because it just brings in like fall. We're going to get ready to buckle in. We're going to, we're getting ready for nurturing, warm, heavier meals. We're getting ready for those blankets. And so great time to clean out the closet. Like what no longer belongs in here, right? Same, same with the springtime coming into this new, everything's open, everything's blooming and blossoming. And we're ready for, we're ready for new, we're ready for renewal. And the Easter season brings that. So like what needs to be renewed in our lives? And we can go with our clearings with that intention. As, and I was just thinking while, while you guys were chatting, like how um, we talk about the layering effects of the 12 principles and how, you know, there's different pieces of energy basics that you kind of have to double back to the quieting the mind and the self-love and the changing your reactions because they all just kind of weave their way in and out of each successive principle. And you um, can look at the energy of each principle from here. Like you could slow it down and look mm -hmm. at the energy 
Where, what's the energy around quieting your mind? And then moving forward to healing the block. Um, and then just how big the forgiveness piece is to that. I, I find that's what speaks to me um, yeah. the loudest and clearest. And, and you give, um, you know, some cue-ins to yourself to kind of check to see if you're holding on to an unforgiveness and it, like shame, blame, anger, resentment. Um, feeling like a victim. Those those are all indications that you have some mm -hmm. sort of unforgiveness still harbored in your heart, even if you may have thought that you... And again, forgiveness can come... Sophia and I talked about this um, quite a bit too in, in the book study that we're doing on the same book um, about the layers of forgiveness as well. Like you can... Mm -hmm. It can be done as a miracle moment with complete forgiveness. Um, as Jesus teaches us, um, even, you know, in the Lord's Prayer, he talks about um, forgiving our trespasses as we forgive those. Um, but also how God, when he, he gives us complete absolution, when, when he has forgiven us, he, it's as if it never happened. He, he doesn't keep account of our sins and say, you know, remember that time when I forgave you for this, you know, got that check over here. It's like, what'd you say you did? Like, what's mm -hmm. in? <laughs> you know, it's completely gone. And so it can happen with us as well in a miracle moment. And I've had that happen to me. Um, but at other times, it takes it takes several, several tries um, where it kind of comes in layers and we can forgive parts of or we could forgive for a while and then something will trigger a memory and, and mm -hmm. we'll, hold, we'll pull back and have an unforgiveness again. Um, and so you talk about how that's a block. Um, and a lot of it can be linked as well to trauma um, with forgiveness, right? For the person who perpetrated a, a wrongdoing to us and how we, we hold on to that. Almost as if, it, if it's like part of our identity, like with, without mm -hmm. that story. And, and I think we go into it again in the next principle um, deeper, but... Yeah, I don't know how you want to speak to that. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a huge conversation. And, and what I have found with, and, and you, everything, what you're saying is correct. So what I have found in, with healing the block is, um, for me, I took on this, this motto, like a habit of, it, it was something that I imprinted, which was compassion without compromise. So I had to have compassion without compromise. That's how I was able to get to the forgiveness because you're right, when you have trauma, there are imprints of energy at hand that are behind the scenes. They're not in the forefront. So while you, while you in the forefront, we can think every day, okay, well, like that wasn't nice and let me forgive that person. And, and we can have a memory of our past and we can, that can be really like the thing we focus on, whether we're in a victim mentality, if we admit it or not. But the behind the scene thing that happens for people that have a lot of trauma is what I call soul fragments. And you have these soul fragments that have been left behind in the scene of the big pain moments. And you are reactive from that age, you know, when something familiar comes up. And so the soul fragment comes on hand. And so you're not even aware that this is what's happening. You have like a different identity taking on the attitude of the younger version of you. And just to keep you safe. So you don't experience that pain, suffering, or anything else again. And so your decisions will be a little different. So getting to compassion without compromise, it gives you a pause in the moment to see, am I acting from this point of my adult version? Am I acting from a younger version? Am I able to see love and light around this person? Because as this adult version of me, I know very well that that is possible, but maybe my seven-year-old self, she doesn't know that. She doesn't understand that because she was hurt and she was she was shamed and she's, she doesn't want that experience again. Or maybe it's the 14 year old self who's a little defiant and a little defensive and going to shoot it right back at you and be like, you know, go away. They're going to be like really angry and sassy and fresh. And so it's really interesting when we kind of slow down and we're like, compassion without compromise. God, lead me, guide me, show me to the healing that is needed in this moment. And the releases, the forgiveness, the releases, the willingness to unplug it from affecting our every day but we'll carry you're right many layers in the different imprints of our body and our, of our ages until we heal 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 them all 
So energetically, there's a string of energy that can last. And we're like, why can't I just get over this? Why can't I just get over this? Right? Yeah. And, and you talk too about hoarding those, right. right? You found that you were a hoarder in a sense, keeping the blocks of these forgotten energetic tones within my right. energetic system. Right. And, and not saying it in a, like a mean way, I'm saying it in a love way, right? Because we don't realize that there's all this trauma and these layers to ourselves and you hoard the energy because it feels safe to do so for some reason, bizarre. Or like you're protecting it too. You that's know, like what I mean. Trying, yes. Yeah. Like you're trying to protect that like, young self. Well, that's what the young self is doing. It's like, I can't have that happen. And so I'm going to react this way. And so you're right. It's, and you can't even get to the trauma, those versions of yourself without a little work, without a little energy work of aligning. And yeah. And I feel like it also has to kind of be noted in this, in this instance, you know, we talk about the word trauma, it's kind of a big T word. And I think that sometimes when people hear the word trauma, they, they might be a little afraid of it or, you know, well, I had a really good childhood, yes. you know, I, I had a, a lot given to me, but trauma is not always something extremely, you know, that stands out to you. It really is a negative experience. And so when you kind of like allow it. yourself to go there, right, there's a lot more you can uncover. Yeah. I like that you're saying that I just, um, Gabby Bernstein just wrote a book on, um, it's called happy days. It's all around trauma. And she got this method from, um, I forget the man's name, Brian, something or other. Anyways, it's big T, little T, big trauma, little trauma. And literally we all have instances or experiences in our life that will shift the frequency that we're living in. And this is what they're talking about. It's, it's not necessarily the volume of the pain. It's like, maybe you weren't beaten or, you know, you didn't have something really bad happen that you would list out as a big T, but maybe there were subtle shifts of the removal of love in your life. And so maybe you were um, expected to exceed. And maybe there were some expectations put on you. And so those might come up as more of a little T because they adjusted your frequency. You stopped being in the frequency of love that you came in. You, you shifted to meet other people. That is what the disruption is. When we shift our frequency out of our original state to meet the people around us where they are. And I feel like there's a lot of uh, circumstances too that we've written off as that was so subtle. There's no way that that's yes. still in my system. You right. Know, if, if you wanted to play with girls on the playground and they were like, no, we don't, we, we're all set. We don't want you to play with us. Those little micro moments can be the little T that you have forgotten about until right. you're journaling. It's just a prompt. shift. In, it, change, it changes your frequency. And so there is a disruption right there. So we don't, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of labels. And so we use, but we use big words to describe things because we can, un, we can as a whole come in and be like, oh, okay, that's interesting. Let me pay attention. I find um, when we're children and we haven't have, um, we haven't had our life experiences to be able to learn from, um, we make meaning out of the part of the protection that we have in in response to the trauma, the little trauma, the big yeah. trauma that we experience, we create a meaning. Yeah. And generally speaking, the meaning means there's something wrong with me. Either well, I'm, of course I'm unworthy, I've done something wrong, I'm a bad girl, I'm I'm whatever it is, because when we're children, our belief is that the adults in our lives know everything. Like they they don't do things wrong. We don't we don't have an understanding of um, how adults experience life yet as children, children, we also think other children are right. Yeah. We, we don't even see them as being like off or wrong. We see ourselves. As so being our, off our trauma oftentimes is, is actually escalated and created by us. It's, it's our yes. response to something maybe minor that happens, but we create this meaning about ourselves inside of this little thing. And so it's undoing that. It's like looking at, is that true? You know, really questioning our belief about something. It's a whole unraveling of, of that. But I said this, I said this around among, you know, Riley and, and Molly too. Like when you have a, a, a gift of, of sensing energy around someone, because you can go into their field and you can pick up that energy 
you automatically can assign a meaning to it. So you think they're talking about you, but what you're really hearing or sensing is their own inner turmoil. And see, you learn to prejudge. We learn to prejudge because we are all energetic beings. We can be in each other's energy field all of the time. And sometimes unknowingly, we're leaking all over the place. We're just, we're leaking our emotions and we're assigning meanings to everything. Like she doesn't like me. Look at her, look at me. You know, um, they don't, they don't want to hang out with, like we start doing it and we just judge all those little tap-ins, all those little feelings because they're coming in and they're hitting all of our wounds. And you're right. We do create them to why we want to pay attention to our energy is so we can rewrite those stories to pull our energy back in, to, to come in and fill up our cup and realize like, I don't have to put my feelers out and wait for somebody to give me a semblance of love because I am love. Last piece about um, the healing the block um, principle is that the forgiveness piece can be super challenging. And if we ask God to come in and do for us what we can, we feel that like we cannot do on our own, um, miracles can happen. And it, you know, and I think that's that's something else that you talk about inside that chat. Yeah, really. miracles are an everyday occurrence. I was just I just reminded that of this morning um, in my journaling. They, my angels were just reminding me like. A miracle isn't something you're waiting for. A miracle is an everyday occurrence. And how we notice the miracle is by staying present and by giving thanks, by by appreciating everything that is in front of us. Appreciation is what grows love. Appreciation lets you see where God is in your life. And it's in the littlest things. It's in a blade of grass that's made into a, a cross to remind you as you're walking. It is in the nature of two songbirds singing in front of you, reminding you to enjoy life, reminding you that love is here in the present. Love is in, with your people having beautiful conversations. Love is present. I'm so proud of you and the work you are doing to raise the, the vibration of our planet. I invite you to join me at my Angel Healer Immersive Retreat. This is a group experience where I will guide and support you as you further develop your spiritual gifts. You will learn the ins and outs of how to safely commune with heaven in a sacred space that is nurturing and expansive oriented. You were born a healer. And with my God-based method, I will lead you to further awaken and embody your soul's purpose and fulfill your soul's legacy while teaching you the foundational tools for channeling messages and healing energy from the divine. You will learn how to deliver messages from departed loved ones and channel energy as you lean into God's love and witness miracles as they transform your life. Here's a little more of what's inside my Angel Healer Immersive a sacred space to cultivate and expand your gifts, my God-based method for channeling messages and healing energy from the divine, guided instruction and support from my heavenly and earthly angel team, how to work with your clients' Akashic records, guided meditation to your light room in heaven, and an angel healer attunement and certification. I hope you will join me at the Angel Healer Immersive on June 4th. Tickets are available on my website, geniestreet.com. That, that's so, so, so beautiful. And I, I feel like I'm a testament to these principles. Um, so we're, we're in about the middle of the Goddess You book study right now that Colleen is uh, orchestrating. And we meet once a week on Monday nights to talk about a new principle and it's all following each other. And um, because of the book study, I feel like I'm right in this process of soul alignment. It's so beautiful. It's a 12 week, you know, one principle per week kind of thing. And we just finished forgiveness, this chapter healing the block a couple weeks ago. And when I was journaling, you, you have a page called action steps, practicing the act of mm -hmm. forgiveness. Um, and then you give very specific journal prompts because sometimes it's hard to journal, but when you answer a question, it can be easier. Yes. You asks, you asked who needs your forgiveness? 
for me to just journal on who needed my forgiveness was so healing. So if you're listening to this right now, something that I would love for you to pull from this episode is to sit with yourself and ask who needs your forgiveness? What needs your forgiveness? Why do you need to forgive? But then this one was huge for me. What where's and when's in your life need your forgiveness? That was really, really, really profound to go back to these moments, these micro moments of being 12, of being four. And, and there was this moment where it was like, whoa, I need to forgive that moment for happening or I need to forgive myself for reacting in that moment or I need to forgive that other person for doing that onto me whatever it was, even if it was super tiny girls not wanting to play with me on the playground. And this is such a really big time that we're living in because there are instantaneous healings that are happening. So, I mean, the frequency we're living in is like through the roof big. I mean, I've talked about this before as being the time of the healer. It started in like 2016, it started before that, but we noticed the upheaval of all of this fear rising literally all around. We saw a lot of opinionation, a lot of judgments, a lot of inks, and we still see it. We saw it all through COVID and we're seeing it now um, across the world with, with the war in the Ukraine, but we're also seeing a lot of love. We're hearing people talk about God. We're seeing this rise of like, whoa, that, that feels okay. Like, I feel like I can, I can survive. And we're, we're showing up in ways that are really beautiful. And so in your body, notice like when something's coming to the surface, it's not meant for you to re-implant and bury back down. It's meant for you to transform into love, to go through it, you know, to, um, you know, we, we want to transform, but we don't want to not go through it. So that I, that's the, I'm trying to get the word up that I, I like to use for that, but I'm, it's out of my head right now. Um, so we'll go through it. Like you said, instantaneously, you'll remember it, you'll feel it. And then you'll be like, beautiful. I forgive them. But once you feel it is when you can get to the forgiveness, because when we ignore the feeling of it, we, we are still trying to hide. We're still trying to, we don't want to go through it again. And feeling it doesn't mean you're going through it again. It just means you're willing to release it from your body. You're willing to see like, wow, that was really painful. And that really hurt when they were talking about me and pushed me away. And I forget them because now you put it on the outside. Now you're not carrying it within. And that truly could not be a more perfect lead in. Transcend. Trans you want to transcend it in order for it to transform. There it is. Got it. Love that. And in transcending it, you learn to let it go, which is the next principle. The last principle that we're going to talk about in today's episode. Oh my gosh. Letting it go. Oh my God. I loved letting it go when it came in. Like this was such a fun time for me when I was going through my own healing before I even wrote the book, because let it go came in. It was such a freedom that I hadn't experienced. It was like, no, it's like winning the game of Monopoly. You're just like, oh my gosh, that just happened. Like I let it go. And it's like, you feel so vibrant. You're a winner. <laughs> That's what it feels like. Like, wow. Yeah. It's, it's like a freedom. I think you talked mm -hmm. about here too. Um, yes. And again, I think we mentioned this um, with energy basics or something, but um, letting go a big part of that is letting go of your stories um we hold them oh, yeah. so tightly and so dear as if they my precious, are precious. yes <laughs> um but if you think about a fist right that's clenched on to something holding so tightly like you can't pry it open there's no way for anything to come and land in that palm if you're so tightly clenched onto it so releasing mm -hmm. it letting it go frees up it's another you know the freedom to receive and mm -hmm. When we're holding on to the old stories, it's almost like we're refusing to allow a new story to, to enter. And, and oftentimes the stories are painful and it's, and you're right, it's bizarre. It's like the, I forget what the saying is, but like we're more comfortable with the familiar pain than we are with something that's unfamiliar that might be, you know, so much more pleasurable to experience, but we just hold on to it. Um, and, and and because we feel like it's part of our identity, it's almost like we're afraid to let it go because then who will we be? Who will story? we be? 
Yes. And who will the other people that are in our story be if right. they're not what we always thought they were? Right. If they're not like the nasty, evil, you know, wicked witch of the West, then then what? Right. Yeah. And I, you can see now how all these layer in together. You can really see like the energy of the thing that's blocking you is controlling you. And once we let it go, there's this really cool thing I, I, I teach in my classes and in my angel coaching. And I talk a lot about this is, is we get really clenched inside, just like Colleen said, like with her fist, but our energy is flowing like that. We're all knotted up in like this, like we're all crazy, knotted up. And so our goal is to become what I, what I refer to as this is, this is tight and wound. And this is like refrigerator butter, refrigerator butter when you put it on your toast, it's going to crumble your toast. This is what my angels told me. And so I'm going to go with this. It's a great analogy. Refrigerator butter is great, but when you go to spread it on your toast, it's going to crumble and break your toast apart. But if you have your <laughs> butter on the counter, it's going to be soft and it's going to spread on your toast. So you want to be like flowy. You want to be like counter butter in your energy. You want to just be like, oh, I can move myself through this. And one of the, one of the things I love about letting it go is it's a lot like yoga. It's a lot of like a breath to move into a pose because to get there, there's a deep inhale. And then there's an exhale as you're in the pose, because you're holding space for new energy to come in. You're releasing as you're renewing. And it's really fabulous when we look at the power of when we release and let go. When you release into a yoga pose, when you release into a space, and if you don't do yoga, maybe it's even with like your weightlifting. Um, and, you know, you can be really harsh in your weightlifting. You can be like really like um, for women, we can get like competitive with ourselves or with other people and be like really like, mm. but if we go into it like a flow of like um, nourishing my body and we're lifting the weights and we can go into it more like in that gentle, easeful flow to, to see the massive results without like, pumping it so hard and like being so acidic about it we can do it in a more soft alkaline state so that's what i have to say about letting it go is the same thing we can choose to let go of what no longer serves us to to place it down before us and then see what god will do see what will happen what does it feel like if you just put it down for a day well, and also it felt very feminine the way you were saying that, like this mm. is just a very feminine way of doing it. But also in, in letting go, like you don't have to let go. Like there's never, it's never black and white. It's never, it's never all bad or all good. It's like a combination of both. And so to hold, to gently hold the, the good, either the, the lesson or the, the love that, that gets left behind or and to release, you know, to let go and release of the stuff that is no longer serving us. Um, so it's like a little of both. Um, to me, that's that's the best. I mean, it, I mean how many it's times not cutting parts of us off? It's like right. if we're identifying with that story as if it's part of our identity, and we just like chop up, chop it off, like we're chopping off a limb. It it just feels so not good. But if this we it, release yes. what's no longer serving us and and keep what was good about it then we get to have the blessing of both. This is such a powerful conversation because this is how we can heal relationships that are really awful, that are, that are really coming to, to, and like pull at us. Like just because, you know, you're in a, you're in a relationship with someone and you love them and then something happens and then there's toxicity and then there's this angst and then whatever, and there's this breakup. Guess what? Your love always remains with that person because once you have given it, it doesn't go away. Now, what your job is, is to remove the anger, to come to the place of peace and compassion, to understand whatever was going on was a healing. And most of what people have going inside of them and what they put out has nothing to do with you. Literally, they can say it's you, 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 but really it's about them and their pain and their suffering and they're pouring it out onto you. So it's not about serving it back. Like, well, this is really about you. It's really about, okay. All right. And it's not putting it in your body. It's like holding space for God to show you like, what are the parts of that that you can use to make yourself more yummy? What are the parts of this that you can use to forgive? 
to go a little further, to see maybe where this is an interflective exercise to see like maybe where you've been holding on too tight in other areas. There's a healing here. There's a healing. And though relationships can break and be awful and, and feel like you're coming apart, we can come to a conclusion of love if we so choose. And I love that you brought up relationships because I do feel like that's where a lot of people hold on to their anger. Mm -hmm. um, but you put a Buddha quote in here in this <laughs> chapter that holding on to anger is like grasping a hot coal. Yeah. The intent of throwing it at someone else, but all the while you're holding that coal and you're the one that gets burned. Right. I mean, God says, like, let, let those of you, you know, this is around sin. Like, you know, you, we want to stone the person that's wrong. You know, you want to stone this person. You want to call them out. You want to be angry. You want to point the finger. And he says, let those of you who don't have sin come forward, that don't have that in their eye. Like, let those people come forward. If you have not sinned, then you get to come forward. Because the truth is, we're all messy. And when we practice compassion without compromise, we're understanding whatever they have going on is really nothing to do with you. And releasing that and holding space for their own healing, praying for them, will shift that vibration, that frequency between you. It takes one, it takes one person to rise above the mess for it to start to have a miracle moment to come in and heal. On page 90, same, same as the Buddha quote, um, you give like a list of clues. Mm -hmm. um, for not living in your soul alignment, maybe holding on to uh, a story that no longer serves us or an unforgiveness. And I'll just quickly read the list. Um, one is life goes from event to event without feeling joy. Um, another is you feel lost, worried, shameful, even lonely around others. You don't have a strong sense of your talents. You experience self-loathing. You feel weak and your mind is scattered really love that this is how god had me write the book instead of it being all positive like like these are the positive ways to feel because we don't really live there we don't really live and land in that place and we we really can more familiarize ourselves with what we don't have and we can look at this list to say wow i kind of land here so we can you can circle the spaces here like are you feeling worried, shameful, lonely, even when you have a family, even when you have people around you? Are you going from event to event because you're taking up space and you really don't have joy, but you're, you're seeking happiness. You're just like, whatever, just being busy. Are you experiencing any form of self-loathing? Are you talking smack to you? Like you can, you can see this. Do you feel weak in any part of your body? Do you feel weak, tired? And is your mind all over the place? Like, these are common things. I, um, I love that you talk about the ceremonial fire. Because mm. uh, that just, to me, that feels like a really great action step that someone can take. Yes. Um, sometimes it's really intimidating to go internally and do all of the work on the inside. So sometimes it, it might be a little bit easier or more gentle to uh, do this, you know, do this um, step of having the ceremonial fire. So can you talk about this whole get your queen goddess on? Yeah, get your queen on. Let get, it go. You know, yeah, I, I always say like your queen move is your intention. And that's really what this is about. Because your intention is, I'm not really sure what to do with all this. And I love a ceremonial fire because it gives I mean, this is this is ancient. It's not something that was just made up. But a ceremonial fire is like representing what you're letting go and ready to have transformed. Because what does a fire do when paper goes into it? It burns the paper and it turns to ash. It transforms it. It has to go through a whole transcendence before it's the ash. And that's what you're going to do. And so writing down any of those stories, anything, those inks or feelings. And if you can't even get there, following the journal prompts to get there on a piece of paper um, to pour it out of you. And then witnessing it going through that transcendence and then into ash, transforming, shifting. It, it creates a whole new energy around like what's possible. 
beautiful release. What's going up in the flame? What's going up in the smoke? What will God, what will God do with it? And I feel like too, if you don't have the capability to have a fire, because you might live in New York city or you might live in, you know, a big building where you, you can't do a fire. I also got this image of, um, taking your pieces of paper and putting them in a bowl of water and mm-hmm. putting the water out, you know, at exactly. night to capture the moonlight or something where the water can also transcend into a different form. Yeah. It doesn't have to be physical fire. Um, it's the energy behind. So we understand energy that basically that's what we're looking for. The transcendence we're looking for the, the release of it. And I love the water idea. You know, I have a friend, um, a student of mine who he collects full moon water, rainwater, and he, he jars it, he jars it for healing sessions and for cooking and for drinking because it's so magical and it, because it has such a high frequency to it. So yeah, we can do many different things with that. Yeah. You talk about other forms of releasing, um, like crying, hugging, laughing, Mm -hmm singing writing drawing painting good dance party yeah Yeah. like because again if it's if it's energy if it's if it's blocked energy if it's stored energy if it's painful energy like just getting it out emoting it somehow any way that you can i mean i don't know about you but a good belly laugh is just like sometimes i laugh at the it's usually at myself but it's like the dumbest thing it's like why am i cracking up so bad that i can't even stop myself from laughing and it's really just because I need to release something. Mm-hmm. And that's the way it needs to come crying. out. You start crying. You start sobbing because you're laughing so hard and you're like, oh my God, I really needed that release. Yeah. Right. So it's not only release, we can also create energy this way. It's funny because I talk about this in my next book. I talk about the ing, which are the actions, right? The singing, the dancing, the cooking as being a, a gateway into expressing our, our energy or get, getting our talents on, getting really like... Mm, yummy and our gifts start opening up so it is a form of like surrender it's a form of release it's a form of like shifting our vibration from one frequency to the next like yeah this is no longer needing to be here so I love a good dance party a good singing in the shower like expressing it and like having fun in order to you know pour it out of you really it's really really rewarding and I just saw another part in here too even about um your moral compass inhaling the block we have a due north we all have a moral compass in in the direction our soul is really meant to go and where we're going against our green there's a feeling to it there's an energy to it when we go against our truth we know it and if we pay attention to the energy of that see is how they layer together we can also find our really easy way of surrendering and letting it go because your true north doesn't want to carry that they don't want to carry it into the next principle. I mean, I know we're not going to do that now. So we'll be getting to it. But I did want to say, so this is some really um, intense work for a lot of people to do. Mm-hmm. And I think it can be quite intimidating to try to do it by yourself. Um, and so I would love for you to just kind of share with um, anyone that's listening some opportunities Uh, to not feel like they're by themselves. Like you're, you have an angels don't lie Facebook group where someone can always come in. And that is such a nurturing, loving environment of people just like you. If you're listening to this, you are, you are with us. And that's a great place. You also, you have an angel healer program that usually is done in person. And so that's usually kind of more of a local thing, but this year you're doing it online. And that's going to be another great opportunity for people to come together and and get some of this yummy, uh, I'm going to say therapy. It really is very, very therapeutic work. Um, When is that? It it is, right? Yeah. So we have a couple couple of um, really expansive, I want to say like soul expansive that build off of these principles experiences. And um, one being the angel healer uh, immersive, which is a one day retreat style experience. And, and that experience is really for anyone who is currently working with their gifts in some format. They know they have gifts and they're working with them. And that, that kind of just takes you to that next level. There is a certification that comes with that program and an opportunity to move 
into my digital angel healer training, which is someplace where people, where they don't know to start. Um, I would start with the angel mediumship third eye masterclass, because we've made this really beautiful pathway for the individual that doesn't really fully comprehend all of this and all of this energy conversation. Um, and then they get led into the next, their next right step. And this was the way God had me build it. So it was really intentional, really specific and offers um, just the right amount of guidance. But like you said, we had like in-person experiences for, for all of that yumminess, which are on social sites that I hang out on Instagram and Facebook. I'll do pop-up readings and conversations. My angel angels don't lie group, which is a great community of like-minded souls that gather and they just offer moral support. Right now we've been running the goddess you, I'm not going to say we, I'm going to say you Colleen and Sophia have been running um, a book club, which has proven to be a really massive awakening for a lot of people. It is just unbelievable. So um, I feel like we're going to be holding a wait list for when we'll run it again. Um, but it is massively impressive uh, what they've built and how they're bringing, they're really shifting people's lives by that. So, and of course, if we have the podcast, tons and tons of episodes for you guys to circle back to or go to the videos on YouTube. And that angel mediumship, um, if, if you are listening to this and you kind of caught that, that's actually a complimentary uh, course that Jeannie offers. It's a six part video course and it's, it's complimentary. So that is for sure, a wonderful place to start. If you're not really familiar with where you want to go and you just want to learn more because you were led here, right? Yeah. You were led yeah. here. God has a great plan and all roads lead to our awakening. All roads lead to our healing, just as the goddess principles had laid the foundation for everything that I've been doing, how they came into my life, where they have led me. They are the foundations that have brought me to create each every each and every offer each and every class um that support people so and and they really is the foundation for my other books i have to say the goddess principles are just they're foundational i can see why yeah i can see why oh my gosh you guys this was so much fun this was fun <laughs> this is awesome if you, if you want a copy of the book you can purchase it on Amazon. I have links on my website, genestreet.com. Um, and I'm happy to, if you really want a signed copy, I'm happy. I have some, some here limited copies, but if you want to send me an email at genie at genestreet.com, I will uh, set that up for you and um, we'll send you a little invoice. Yeah, I can just, it'll be, it's great. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm really excited. I'm really can't wait for the next one, honestly. Thank you guys. I hope you have a most beautiful, beautiful day. And you know, I know what I know because angels don't lie. God bless you guys. Have a great day. Thank you, Jeannie. Bye. Bye. <laughs>